So in this case, if you just want to make something or you want to go shopping for what's kind of in here in the H5P studio, you'll just click that create button in the top right hand corner. And you can see it's got a big old search bar here, but what you might want to do at first is just shop around maybe in the A to Z uh, listing. You can see there are things like accordions or agamotos. There's quizzes here, but you already do your quizzes probably in Econestoga, and that ties to your grade, grade book. So there's no reason to look to any of the quizzing tools here. Um, but maybe you want students to work with an audio recording. Um, or maybe you know what you're looking for, and like we had looked at before, you know that you'd like to create sort of a drag and drop activity. So you can see that I just searched for drag by typing drag into the search bar and here's all of the things that mention drag in them. You can see that there's an image drag and drop if you want to work with that. Or there's a text drag and drop and I'm going to work with the text drag and drop. So I'm going to go ahead and click drag the words because it's a text based drag and drop and when it queues up again, right, you kind of follow the, the red asterisks to kind of learn what it is that you need to do. Remember that at any moment in time, you can go up to the top to the tutorial if you need help to learn how to build this. So there's a tutorial built onto every H5P and there's always an example for you to flip through and look at if you would like as well. Um, so my title is uh, Drag and Drop example. You can see that the next field is describe the task and you want to describe it to, to your students. So describe it explicitly to your students based on how you think you'll want them to interact with it. So drag the words into the correct boxes. Then uh, H5P tries to coach you on how to use this exact tool. So it's saying here's some important instructions. Don't ignore the yellow box. Read the yellow box, especially the first time. You can always hide it later, but it says droppable words. So the words that can be dropped are added with an asterisk or a star in front and behind the correct word or phrase. So in the example they have below, Oslo here would be a draggable word because it has an asterisk before and after Oslo. You can add a little hint. They call it a textual tip, but it's a hint by using a colon before the tip that you'd like them to see. So in the example, H5P content may be edited using a browser, but they put in a tip by using the colon and the tip that would appear is what kind of program is Google Chrome? For each empty spot, there's only one correct word and it knows what word is correct because you literally put it in the text in your example text below. Uh, so there'll be an empty space where Oslo appears here and it's going to know already that Oslo is the only word that should appear here. So let me go ahead and just paste in the text that I pre uh, configured, which is a little bit of a blurb about H5P. And I'm going to read that out loud. H5P is as of March 2018 used on more than 30,000 and here 30,000 will be an object that can be dropped websites. It's used by thousands of universities, colleges, school districts, schools, and other organizations. Some of the largest and most well-renowned educational institutions in the world use H5P. Some use H5P for MOOCs. And here's a word that I thought some people might not be familiar with, so I added a text tip or a hint. Hint, massive open online courses. And that's all contained within the asterisk. So uh, some use H5P for MOOCs and course design, others use it as a tool rolled out throughout the entire organization. Some organizations also allow learners to use H5P both as an authoring tool and a learning tool. So it's really cool that some places are having students use H5P. Um, so let's go ahead and take that exact example. So I've got it set up, I've got all my asterisks in the right place. And when I'm ready and I think I want to preview it, I go to hit that save button. But I know it's going to tell me to put a title over here first. So let me get my title and put it here. And I'm going to say that this is just going to be a reference is my subject. And when I hit save, that's when I get the preview. And so this is what my students would encounter. Drag the words into the correct boxes. 
H5P is, as of March 28, used on more than 30,000 websites. It's, um, so in this case, in this particular example, it gave me the, the answers in order, but they are randomized. So that just randomly came in that they had the answers in the right order. That's not usual. So students can drag in all the answers that they think are correct and they can hit the check button. And I can see I got four out of four. And so what I really like about H5P and uh, some other people picked up on this as well, is these little gamification elements like the star system that it awards you. Students feel really rewarded by something like that. Um, they also benefit a lot from maybe in some of the interactives that you've noticed, you'll notice that there's a retry button. That retry button is crucial for learning. And so I, I encourage you to use that and allow that. There's also the option to put in an, a button that says show solution. And all of that is really appealing to learners.